How's it going guys, Caleb Wistead here, and today we're gonna to be breaking down everything you need to know about walleye jigs. Now, my goal is to make this the most comprehensive video out there on walleye jigs so that you can understand exactly which one to look for next time you go shopping. We're gonna start by breaking down everything that is important about a walleye jig, from hooks, to line ties, to weight, to color, we're gonna break all that down and then I'm actually going to go into each jig style and give you a couple of applications for each style so you know exactly what technique they're designed for and how you can use them to catch walleyes. We're just gonna to stick to plain jigs that you can either add a plastic trailer to or live bait in this video. At the end of this video, I'm also gonna give you my number one underrated jig that I think a lot more anglers should be using, so stick around for that. Let's get started. We're gonna start with weight. Now walleye jigs are typically sized by weight, so if you go buy a pack of jigs, they're gonna have a specific weight on there, and that's going to help you decide which ones to get. So walleye jigs typically come in anywhere from about 1 32nd of an ounce up to about an ounce, and that's kind of the range you're gonna be using for most walleye fishing. Now the heavier the jig, the better it's gonna hold in wind and current. If you're fishing a, a real fast river situation, or in a windy area or deep water, you're gonna to wanna to go more with that like, you know, half to uh, three quarter ounce jig and that'll help you hold in those situations. Now the heavier the jig, the faster and snappier the movements of the jig are gonna be as well. So this jig reacts really quickly to your rod tip movements and it's great for snap jigging because that bait is gonna really pop and uh, trigger fish. Now there's certain days, especially in clear water in natural lakes, fish will be keyed on more natural, slower moving presentations. And that's when you wanna to go to a lighter jig, like a, a eighth ounce or a quarter ounce jig. And that is going to move much more naturally through the water. It's gonna have slower reactions. It's not gonna be snapping and twitching real quick. And sometimes that's more what the walleyes want, especially in like shallower water, clear water situations. Sometimes you have to downsize that jig weight and uh, have a slower rate of fall and that really triggers walleyes in uh, certain situations. Now the other thing you're gonna need to know about weight is basically the, the more bulk you put on the jig, the heavier your head's gonna have to be to overcome the water resistance of that trailer. So if you're fishing a larger swim bait with a big paddle tail, you're gonna have to upsize your jig weight to make up for the, that bulk that's dragging in the water. Uh, just to make that fall rate consistent and be able to keep that jig down towards the bottom. So and that pretty much covers weight. So the next thing we're gonna get into is jig composition. And basically there is two primary materials that jigs are made out of. One is lead and one is tungsten. Now lead has the advantage of being really cheap to make, easily moldable so they can make all kinds of different shapes and it's the most common jig type you'll find. The disadvantages are lead is toxic, so if you're concerned about the environment or your health, lead isn't always the best choice for that. You know, it's been proven fairly safe to use, but it's definitely toxic to some degree. Um, the other disadvantage to lead is it's very soft. So when you hit bottom or feel a strike, it's not gonna telegraph that to your rod as well as tungsten is. Now tungsten is extremely heavy for its size. It's denser than lead. It's also harder than lead, so it makes a jig fall faster for less weight and less bulk. So you can really get uh, a smaller profile jig that's gonna get you to the bottom quicker. It's gonna have less water resistance. So in deep water situations, it's great. Uh, it also is non-toxic and it is very hard. So you can feel the bottom like really, really well. You can feel rocks and different things on the bottom when you jig it and you can feel the strike better because it's going to not be softened by that lead. So you're going to feel that thump and uh, tungsten is a great choice. However, it's not the cheapest. So if you're losing lots of jigs, a lot of times it's better to go with lead and uh, you're going to, you're not going to break the bank that way, but they're both good choices. Um, you know, tungsten is probably my favorite if I had to pick one, but there's plenty of applications for lead as well. So uh, either will work but that's kind of the difference between the two. So let's get into jig head shape. Now jig head shape is a key to how the jig performs underwater. It's one of the most important parts of a jig. Now the typical standard 
jig that's been in your grandpa's tackle box and your dad's tackle box and I'm sure your tackle box is a standard ball head jig and basically it's just a ball on the end of a angled jig head hook and it gets the bait down there and it does the job they're cheap to make and you'll find them in just about any tackle store in the country so the disadvantages to them is they don't track super straight they tend to wobble a little bit more they're not going to lay on the bottom very well they're going to want to roll over and kind of lay flat and lifeless on the bottom if you're fishing on the bottom um, but they also don't cut current real well so they don't drop super fast in a river situation they're just going to fall a little bit slower and tend to lift up off the bottom more so if you're fishing just basic uh, areas where you're going to lose a lot of jigs these are probably the cheapest ones you can get so that's a huge advantage and they just they do work so um, bulk jigs just keeping them in your tackle box that's probably a great one to use now a little bit more advanced jig is going to be your pill head jig so this is a pill shaped jig so it's round from the side profile but when you turn it this way you'll see the sides are flat now this jig is going to track a lot straighter than a ball head jig and it's going to fall a little bit faster and it's going to do better in current. So this is a great jig for casting and retrieving swim baits or uh, you know vertical jigging and current like a river. It's going to be great for slicing through that current, keeping your jig tracking straight and that's an awesome option. They also oftentimes have really nice eyes on them and uh, that can be a trigger as well. The third style of jig is going to be kind of a hybrid or like I guess I would call it a deep V jig and these are fairly new on the walleye scene but they're a, a top heavy jig that comes down to kind of a keel on the bottom and these jigs fall really really fast for their size they've got those nice flat sides similar to the pill head jig but they cut through current really really well and uh, the one disadvantage to them is again when you hit the bottom with them they tend to roll over because of the weight on top design they're not going to be great for fishing on the bottom but for vertical fishing especially in like a river or where you want a fast fall rate these things are awesome and I really really like these jigs now the next head shape is the stand-up jig so a stand-up jig is basically flat on the bottom and that's going to allow this jig to sit upright and it's going to basically have that bait just up in the fish's face and if the fish are feeding on the bottom a stand-up jig is a really good choice because you can lift it drop it and that bait stays above the mud and kind of wiggles in their face it's visible even when it's on the bottom it doesn't lay over flat and the fish can see it and they can just come down and suck it right in off the bottom now here's another shape that's fairly new to the walleye scene and that's the pear shaped jig so a pear shaped jig is a little bit more weight forward than a round jig and that's going to keep it more horizontal because the weight is kind of pulling down on the front of that jig so these are great for fishing under a float like a slip bobber you know or a vertical jigging they're gonna they're gonna really keep that thing horizontal in all conditions and you don't ever have to worry about it tipping down on you so that's a good shape for uh, those situations and then we have your minnow bait head so the minnow bait head is basically shaped like a minnow head and that is going to keep that bait tracking really straight it's also going to match up well with plastic right here where the seam is you're not going to get a neck down spot where the head is actually wider than the plastic it's going to match up and look like a streamlined profile all the way across that jig and that works really well for casting and retrieving swim baits it's one of my favorite swim bait jigs is the minnow head jig now here's one more style that i would consider uh, a very good jig for fishing in weeds and that is like I guess I would call it more of a uh, triangle style jig where there's a point that comes to the line tie at the front and that's going to snake through weeds a lot better than a jig tie coming off the top and it's kind of a streamlined head designed for the weeds to just kind of slip over that jig and that works much better in heavier cover and uh, some of them have weed guards as well but that's uh, one of my favorite jigs for fishing weeds is what I would call a triangle shaped jig. Alright guys let's get into jig hooks. So jig hooks are very key to the performance of any walleye jig and there's four key aspects we have to look at when we're choosing the right hook. Number one is wire size, number two is shank length, number three is the hook gap, and number four is the line tie position. So the hook wire size is going to be key to how you're going to hook fish and hold fish primarily. So a lighter wire hook is going to hook fish better, uh, it's got much less 
resistance to penetrate the fish's mouth and it's going to tend to be easier to hook fish especially on light line and lighter gear now when we're talking heavier hooks the heavier the hook is the better it's going to hold fish once you hook them and if you are fishing really really big fish or big baits and you've got heavy tackle you're going to want a heavier hook so you don't bend that hook out in the fish's mouth and you're able to hold that fish better and uh, that's what you want to look for when it comes to wire size now there's one other advantage to a light wire hook and that is if you tend to hook a lot of stumps if you're fishing in a lot of wood cover you can actually bend this hook out uh, if you have heavy enough line and you can retrieve that jig and then just bend your hook back into shape and not lose that jig on that stump or that wood cover and that can be a really really beneficial factor when you're fishing around a lot of wood so that's pretty much it when it comes to the wire size now the shank length is very key when it comes to fishing longer baits you're going to want a longer shank length you want to have that hook back far enough that the fish isn't able to grab that the tail of that jig and not get the hook in their mouth now the other great scenario is when you're double hooking a minnow so if you want to hook that minnow through the head and then back through the body again this is a great way to do it with that longer shank hook so when i'm fishing live bait for instance i'm going to typically go with a short shank jig such as this one and that's because when you fish live bait a lot of times you you want that bait close to the jig head so it's a nice compact package and you're not fishing that bait way far back from the uh, jig so when you're fishing like minnows or leeches and you're lip hooking them and hooking them right in the end you want to be able to have that fish grab that bait and get the jig in their mouth so that's when it when you want a short shank now the third thing you're going to want to pay attention to is the hook gap so the gap is basically the distance between the shank and the tip of the hook point and you want enough gap in there that it's going to be able to hook the fish really well um, you start getting into a bulkier bait and that gap starts to shorten up and number one it's going to be a little bit harder to hook that fish number two when you do hook that fish the fish's mouth isn't going to be able to slide all the way down to the bend if there's a big bulky plastic in the way and it's probably going to come off you want that bend to be uh, where the the fish's mouth is sitting when you're fighting that fish if it's up here it's going to pop out much easier so you want to make sure your hook gap is sized correctly for your bait now you also don't want too big of a gap because if you have too big of a gap you may miss more fish it's harder to, for the fish to get that bait in their mouth the wider that gap is so kind of keep it uh, narrower for smaller baits and only go wider on the gap when you have to or when fishing bigger fish to make sure you get good purchase on that fish's mouth now number four is line tie position so line tie position is very important typically it's very simple the further towards the top of the jig that line tie is the more it's designed for vertical fishing and the reason is that line's coming right down here it's going to keep that jig horizontal in the water and you're going to be able to have that minnow profile or that bait profile uh, if you start to try and fish like a more line tie forward jig such as this one in a vertical fishing scenario it's going to hang down the bait's going to look like it's dead and not hanging not natural at all so that's more designed for a horizontal presentation where you're swimming a jig casting casting and retrieving that sort of thing great uh, for swim baits or snap jigging stuff like that uh, you can use a much more forward facing line tie and again the other advantage to a forward facing line tie is it snakes through the weeds much better especially on a weedless jig the problem with a vertical line tie is you have a line coming off the top here and weeds tend to slide up along the line and get caught on that jig so it's not a very weedless presentation so if you move that eye forward it's going to slide through the weeds much better all right guys time for color color is one of the most confusing aspects of jigs and it's something that uh, you can break down as far as you want sometimes it makes a difference sometimes it doesn't but i've tried to simplify color selection down to about six or seven different types of color and then from there it's just a matter of experimenting so basically um, to me you've got your silver and gold and shiny colors you've got solid uh, natural and patterned natural colors and then you've got solid and patterned uh, bright colors and then you've got your uvs and your glow colors 
So that's kind of how I break it down. With a lot of walleye jigs, they have two-tone colors as well, so they're mixing and matching a couple of those different ones. So I'm gonna start with your chromes, your silvers, your golds. These are great for fishing clear water, sunny days when that light is gonna hit the jig and reflect off of it. Um, a gold jig is, if I had to pick one jig, it would probably be a gold jig. A gold jig will catch fish just about anywhere, but there's times where uh, chrome or silver tend to work better. Uh, especially in like pelagic fish scenarios where you have smelt or alewives, stuff like that, that are more silver, shad, that kind of thing. That can be a real key. Um, probably not the best colors to fish in really dark murky water uh, or, you know, really dark days. They don't really stand out as much. Those are great for clear water, sunny conditions. Now your natural, uh, let's see if I have one here. Here's a, a natural color. A solid color these are great as well for fishing clear water scenarios finicky fish um, you know I tend to not use as many bright colors in clear water and tend to stick with those natural whites and uh, minnow minnow type colors even a plain lead head jig you know a lot of jigs come unpainted like this one will catch fish it, it's a pretty natural looking color and um, that's a great option you can also get like natural pattern colors um, that have like stripes and stuff on them and I don't think that's as important on walleye jigs because typically they're moving fairly fast uh, but you can certainly change it up and put some like stripes or scale patterns on those jigs and then you get into your bright solid colors and your bright pattern colors and those I obviously are going to fish in a little bit darker stained water um, chartreuse is one of the best walleye colors if not the best walleye color overall of all time chartreuse will catch fish in almost any condition even clear water at times i've done really really well on chartreuse it just seems to be a walleye killer uh, another great one is purple uh, purple is a good walleye color especially in darker water you're talking dark days on dark water you want a darker bait so that profile can be seen from below and that's when purple is going to be more of a, a standard for me than like my oranges or chartreuses so then we get into our basically our UVs and our glows and glow jigs have been around for a long time they're great for fishing at night it helps the fish track that bait at night and I'll definitely use those if it's if I'm fishing in the dark a lot of times not always sometimes it tends to have the opposite reaction and fish kind of shy away from it but you just have to kind of try it and see how it works some nights you can't hardly beat a glow jig it just seems like they really really key on that and then your UV colors, those are going to be really good in low light conditions. So like morning, evening, super murky water, a little bit of UV light comes through and, and it, it reacts different to water than, than your standard light that we see. And fish can kind of pick that out in low light conditions typically. So uh, I think this these jigs right here have some UV on them and that's going to show up a little bit better for those fish. So that's kind of how I break down color. Again. There's days where it really, really matters, but there's a lot of days where basically just a basic presentation change of light to dark or dark to light or, you know, to UV is going to be the only thing you're going to need. It's not really going to matter if it's pink or chartreuse or orange versus black or purple. You know, it's, it's really not going to matter. It's, as long as you're making those bigger changes, you'll find out what the fish prefer. And that's what I go by. So one more thing I wanted to go over is jig accessories. So basically what can we add to a jig to make it more effective? Now some jigs are modified to accommodate certain things and some jigs have them built right in. So the first one I'm gonna go over is the stinger hook. So you'll see some walleye jigs have a line tie on the bottom of the jig like this one. And that's to put a stinger hook on that jig. And the stinger hook is basically an extension of your hooking capacity. So it's going to take a little piece of line or wire and it's gonna move a hook to the back of the bait. So this little treble hook is back here for short striking fish that are just coming up behind it and nipping that bait. They're gonna get hung on that stinger hook. And it's a great way to hook those fish that are finicky and short striking. So that's a good option to have a few jigs in your arsenal with that, that downward facing line tie towards the back that's going to get you more hookups on those short striking fish. Another thing that you can find on some jigs is a weed guard. So there's plastic weed guards 
Uh, there's wire weed guards like this one, and these are gonna help you obviously get through weed and wood cover much slicker. They're gonna bounce those weeds over the top of the hook, yet when a fish bites down, it's gonna expose that hook point and you're gonna hook your fish. Now I wouldn't recommend using these if you aren't you fishing in heavy cover because they don't hook fish as well as a standard jig. But man, if you're losing a lot of jigs, it can be a, a game changer to uh, throw on one of these and not get hung up on the weeds or the brush as much. Now another thing that you can add to your arsenal is a jig with a spinner on it. So this one here, this one has a spinner on the bottom of the jig, just a little Colorado blade that spins as you pull it through the water, adds a little bit of flicker, a little bit of flash. That can be really, really good in low light conditions, darker water, bright sunny days when the fish are looking for that flash. And you know, walleyes like spinners, there's no question about it. They've been suckers for spinners for years. So just one more trick you can add to your bag. And then also they have these helicopter spinners, which this is a Northland Whistler jig, I believe is the name of it. And that's got like a little helicopter blade and that blade will spin even at really, really slow speeds. So the Colorado spinner, you're gonna have to move pretty fast to get that, that spinner to move. This one, you can barely be creeping along and that blade is gonna spin. That's a really unique jig and a great way to catch fish that are uh, looking for that flash. Uh, one more thing <clears throat> that you can add to your jig or that, that is added to jigs typically is some sort of holographic eyes. So fish have been long known to key on eyes and a more realistic holographic eye can really make the difference. And a lot of times your, your swim bait jigs or you know your minnow head jigs are gonna have really realistic eyes on them as well. So that's just one more thing you can add to your jig to make it realistic. And then there's one more and that is a rattle. So this is a Kalen's Google Eye jig and you can hear that's got a rattle in it. It's, it kind of bounces back and forth between the two glass eyes in there and a little bit of sound can really make the difference on days when the fish are, are barely seeing the jig in that muddy water or for some reason they're just keying on sound like at night for instance another scenario where they hear that clunkety clunk in there and hear that rattle and that can attract fish as well so those are just some things you can add to a jig to make it a little bit more unique give it a little more flash a little more action a little more sound and that can really up your jig game to carry a few of those options with you so that's pretty much it for all your aspects of a jig that you need to know. So let's get into a few specific applications of some of these jigs and uh, kind of get into what they're best at. So let's start with the typical ball head jig. Now again, this is one of those jigs I'm going to fish when there's just a, a very easy fishing, kind of vertical fishing a lot of times or short cast pitching jigs. When I'm breaking off a lot of jigs and having to retie them, uh, these are the cheapest jigs. A lot of times they have a light wire hook and you can bend them right out of cover or rocks or brush. Just bend that hook back and reuse them. You can snap them off and it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, they're just a good all around, all terrain jig to have in your box. They come in all kinds of colors. So they're very versatile and uh, you should definitely have some round head jigs in your arsenal. Now, a lot of times, like I said before, tungsten jigs only come in round because of the difficulty of molding tungsten. So if you're going to use tungsten jigs, they're most likely going to be round jigs. Um, now the pill head jig is a really, really good vertical presentation jig. Like I said, if you're trying to fish a little bit more current or do like a cast and retrieve or fish in the river, um, you know, that's a great jig to use to keep that bait tracking straight. And these are also pretty economical. A lot of times they also have light wire hooks. They're just a little bit more designed for deeper water and current than those ball head jigs are. I guess I find myself fishing these pill shaped jigs more often than I do the ball head just because of those factors. And uh, that's been a really good jig for me. If I'm you know, casting at night and just pitching like little swim baits and stuff like that, I oftentimes go to that pill head shape. And this is also the shape that they use for moping. So, um, you know, the recent Bassmaster Classic was just one by moping. It's a great technique for walleyes. Pillhead jigs are perfect for that because you're moving really slow and they keep that jig tracking straight so it's not going to spin on your hook as much. And that's, that's what they're really designed for. If I'm going to pitch real shallow to weed or wood cover or I'm fishing around brush piles and stuff like that where I know I'm going to get hung up, that's where I go to a weed guard hook and uh, that's going to be pretty much the only time I use them, but they really, really come in handy for those situations. Um, 
as far as a minnow shaped head if i know i'm going to be casting swim baits all day and fishing swim baits i'm going to go to a minnow style head because that's going to match up with my swim bait really well and i can just know that that profile is looking really really sharp and uh, you don't have to worry about that profile being broken up and good option i love those jigs i use them all the time like i said before a stand-up jig is a jig I'm always going to go to when I think the fish are going to be keying on bottom forage. So if I'm dragging a jig, if I'm doing short hops and then twitching a jig in place, I'm always going to use a stand-up jig because that bait is going to be in a much easier to eat position when that fish comes along and sees it on the bottom. It can pick that jig way easier than one actually laying on the bottom. Fish is going to have a hard time picking that up off the bottom if the jig is laying there but if it's standing up right in its face it's a no-brainer fish on if i am slip slip float fishing and i want to use a jig i'm almost always going to use a pear shaped jig like i said before it's going to keep it horizontal it, they typically have short shanks a lot of these pear shaped jigs and uh, that's perfect for fishing a live bait under slip float that's my go-to and you can get those in some smaller weights as well like 16th ounce 32nd ounce eighth ounce to have that uh, more slow fall presentation for your live bait and that that works really really well for a slip float now the whistler jig um, this is a great jig for fishing in uh, river situations and also i like to fish this jig in the evening or in the dark because it's got that extra that just that extra sound to it with that spinner and a little bit more vibration in the water and it's a keeled type jig so it's gonna track really straight and it's a great live bait jig as well. Uh, just gives that live bait a little bit of extra kick and uh, that's great, great for that scenario. Now the deep V jigs are uh, great for fishing when you want that bait to get down there really, really quickly. And again, you wanna move, use these on a faster moving situation. You don't necessarily wanna use these on the bottom because they'll tip over, but that's a great jig for throwing swim baits on, for throwing jig worms, snap jigging, uh, anything like that. That's a great jig style for that. So you can pop that jig and it's not gonna go way off to the side or spin on you. And uh, that's my preferred jig for those scenarios. Now obviously a stinger hook jig is gonna be when I'm using a larger minnow. So a, a bigger bait and I don't want the fish striking at the tail and not getting hooked. Uh, that gives you a way to extend the length of your jig hook. So if you don't have a long shank jig, you can fish a shorter shank jig and still be hooking up those fish. Now a jig like this with the long, long shank, I'm gonna fish like a jig worm with that, you know, so I get that hook back there far enough on the jig worm. And also if I'm double hooking my minnow and sliding that minnow forward and double hooking it, that's gonna get that hook back there. That's gonna help you hook short striking fish. So that's another option versus going with the stinger hook. Uh, and it works great as well. But you don't get quite the live bait motion that you do with a stinger hook. So it's more of a really uh, dark water kind of fast moving presentation when you're using live bait, but you don't want it to come off the hook. And it doesn't necessarily have to be alive and looking perfect. Uh, it's a good, good way to do that. So that's what I would use the long shank jigs for. All right guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I promised you I would, I would tell you about the jig that I think is the most underrated jig. And I would say that is the deep V jig. This jig is a really a newcomer to the market, but it does a lot of things. Number one, it gets down fast. So it's going to cut through the water when it's dropping and it's gonna get the same weight of jig to the bottom quicker. So a lot of times when you're using live sonar, you're marking fish or, or side scanning fish and you can pitch to them and get that bait down there quick. And that's really, really important before those fish move to get the jig to them. So that's one of the aspects. Number two, it tracks like a pill head jig so it tracks really straight and it falls really fast when you're snap jigging it uh, again it's not the best jig for uh, laying on the bottom but horizontal presentations casting pitching uh, is a great absolutely great style for that and i think a lot more guys should be using this style jigs so hopefully you guys got something out of this video and uh, again i'm going to leave all these baits linked in the comments below so you can pick up any of these jigs and uh, thanks for watching guys like subscribe if you got something out of this here's another video to watch right here we'll see you next time get hooked up